Hey everyone, it's time to wrap up September. Let's start with the videos as usual before we go to the books. I uploaded a discussion video in September and we talked about our reading in 2020. And I thought it was very interesting. Thank you for your comments on my reading and telling me about how your reading is and how we have a kind of dysfunctional perception of our reading. It's very interesting. Thank you very much. I also uploaded a letter to September and I always love your comments on that. So thank you very much for that as well. Now let's get to the books. I actually reviewed two of those separately and let's start with those two. The first book I finished and reviewed is Burnt Sugar. And in my video, I'm very confused about what I really think about the book, if I understand it or not. And I have since watched more reviews by others. And I've come to the conclusion that what other people like about the book, I don't. The book is about a mother-daughter relationship in India and the mother is developing Alzheimer's. We get the book in the present and in the past where we see how the narrator, the daughter, grew up and her relationship with her mother in the present and in the past. For me, this whole book was just showing two very dependent people who are selfish and their main motivation was inflicting pain. And as far as I understood other people, they loved the writing about the book and the meanness or viciousness of the narrator, how she's not a good person, how she's not a lovable person and all these things. And while I agree, I didn't care about that. The writing, I thought it was confused and there were many points where I discovered while reading that I thought, why is the sentence here? Why is this here? And that normally is not a good sign. If I feel I'm pushed out of the reading to consider why is that there? And so I don't really like the writing as well. More of my thoughts in the full review. The other book I uploaded a video for is Die Kieferninseln or The Pine Islands. I read the German original, but there's an English translation out. And I really enjoyed this. It was basically a cover buy because I was in a bookstore and I needed some retail therapy. I didn't know anything about this book going into it, which was not so bad. Because if I had known that this book is also dealing with suicide, I might not have picked it up. So the story is basically we start with our main narrator, Gilbert, who wakes up from a bad dream where he thinks his wife has cheated on him and has an affair. And instead of talking to her, he storms out of the house, goes to work, really gets enraged more and more, comes home, has a fight with her, leaves the house again and disappears to Japan. And there he goes on a pilgrimage and there he also meets a young man who tried to kill himself and he's trying to stop him from killing himself by taking him on this pilgrimage. And part of the pilgrimage is Gilbert's and the other part is following the guidebook of suicide. I forgot the name. Uh, that the young man has, where prominent places for suicides are listed. So we also visit some of those. I really enjoyed the writing in this, how it is very light, very fast, very easy to read and still beautiful. I also really enjoyed Gilbert as a character, how he looked and judged and really was not a lovable person, but I thought it was very funny that everything that he judged in the young Japanese man was something he did himself. Also his idea of this relationship with his wife, this fight with his wife, what's going on there, it keeps coming up, is hilarious in some ways. So I really enjoyed this one. Also more thoughts in the full review. The rest of the books I didn't review. I read McClue and it's very short, but I had trouble finding my way into it because it's very confusing. It's set in the late 1800s and it's on a ship. We have this young man, McClue, he was drunk, he was picked up by his sailor friends or his boatmates. What do we call these people? I don't remember. Anyways, so he got picked up in one town and they put him in a holding cell on the boat because apparently he killed someone else. And this whole book is him trying to get something to drink because he always wants to be drunk and 
it stops the voices in his head and he's going through memories that with the other person going through the ship. We learn about his life, about the relationship of him with the person he apparently killed and his trial. It's very well written once you understand how it works, how it's trying to make sense of his thoughts, how he's trying to make sense of his thoughts and what's going on in his life and everything. But I still come away of this thinking I need to reread this to be more sure and aware of what I've just read. I really enjoy her writing. I really like how she portrays characters, how she picks characters and the world she writes about. But this is something where I didn't quite find my access. Then I read another German book, Wiener Straße. And this is another book that is set in the world around Frank Lehmann. So in Regner wrote Herr Lehmann a few years ago. That was his debut novel. And since then he's written a lot of novels around this character and his friends. So this book is set in 1980s Berlin and it's following the band of characters, how they move into a new flat, how they work in this bar and find jobs. In parallel, there's also the story about the characters in an occupied house that are basically an art gallery or as a life act art, something like that. And nothing really happens and still it's fun to read. The story progresses, the gallery or the art show that is coming up is the final conclusion of the book. But still, it's one of those books where you read it, you like being with the characters, you enjoy hearing more about them because you already like the characters from other books and like this world that they live in. And it's also part nostalgia. I really enjoyed it. The last book I read was the sequel to Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe. And it's just what it says. It's more stories of time travelers in the little cafe where you sit in a chair and you can go back in time to see someone or talk to someone that has also been in the cafe in the past. And we get four more stories around four more characters. I have uploaded a full review for the first book and everything I said about that is still true here. I enjoyed the writing, I enjoyed the characters, I really liked the quirkiness and the ideas. We learn a lot more about the waitress and her past and life and that was very interesting and lovable. I really have to say that the repetition, I can see that it continued, that the rules for the time travel get repeated a lot. And yeah, I didn't mind. I like it. So if you like Before the Coffee Gets Cold, I really think you would enjoy the sequel as well. And that was it. I didn't listen to any audiobooks, which is not completely true. I listened to 36 hours of Atlas Shrugged. But I'm still not finished, so I have no finished audiobook to talk about. But I love Atlas Shrugged and I've been trying to vlog it, so maybe you get a mildly spoilery vlog in a few days because I only have nine hours left. That's my reading. I had a fun reading months in September. Let me know how your September went reading wise or anything else you want to share. Let's talk in comments. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.